In this clinical picture entry, we described the case of a 40-year-old woman who presented to an emergency department after a syncopal episode, which was preceded by chest discomfort, dyspnea, and one week of leg swelling. Two weeks before, she underwent uncomplicated liposuction and abdominoplasty. Initial evaluation and diagnostic studies collectively revealed intermediate high-risk proximal pulmonary embolism. Intravenous heparin was initiated and she was transferred to our institution for further management. Shortly after her arrival, catheter-directed embolectomy was performed owing to worsening chest discomfort and dyspnea, after which she improved. Within 48 hours, she developed recurrent chest discomfort and dyspnea. Repeat CTPA revealed new pulmonary embolism and transthoracic echocardiography demonstrated mobile echo densities in the right and left atria, consistent with thrombus in transit. Given concern for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia as a possible cause of recurrent thromboembolism, a platelet factor IV antibody immunoassay was performed and positive. As such, she was transitioned to bivalirudin while awaiting urgent surgical embolectomy. Intraoperative transesophageal echocardiography showed contiguous thrombus extending from the right to the left atrium through a patent foramen ovale. Gross examination after cardiopulmonary bypass confirmed these findings, and intracardiac and pulmonary artery embolectomy combined with PFO closure was performed. During her unremarkable postoperative course, a serotonin release assay was negative, and she was discharged on a pixaban. An outpatient follow-up testing for other acquired and inherited thrombophilias was negative. Taken together, this case highlights two important practice points. First, inherited or acquired hypercoagulable conditions should be excluded in cases of rapid in-hospital recurrence of pulmonary embolism. Second, management of thrombus in transit involving the left side of the heart remains clinically challenging. Surgical embolectomy, when available, is preferable to address this high-risk entity, especially in cases with concomitant pulmonary emboli or an intracardiac communication.